the treetops are just as unexplored as maybe the depths of the oceans or even other planets. There may be fewer tree climbers than there are, you know, ocean explorers. And there's only a few people uh, in the world that are really at the caliber of Todd and his team. You need to have people have climbing skills, they need to be biologists, and they need to apply a lot of different kinds of techniques to be able to climb into the tree and spend days or even weeks mapping these trees out, learning how the architecture of these very massive crowns are put together. That information is then used and mathematically analyzed to figure out how much standing biomass is actually out there in the forest. We're getting after how much carbon is being sequestered by a particular kind of forest. Carbon dioxide is increasing our atmosphere. We need plants to pull that CO2 out of the atmosphere. That's carbon sequestration. Monitoring the health of the world's ecosystems is really important. These are the systems that humans rely upon, and so measuring how they're changing over time is important to the future of how we survive on this planet. And what we've seen so far is that they're experiencing levels of water stress that we've never measured before. Somewhere between 65 and 70 million trees in California have been dying. The visible pictures tell us one thing, but there's a lot going on that we can't see. And so by using a multi-spectral camera, we can tell things about the plants that you wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye, like how much light is being absorbed or how much is being reflected. And that's what we need. We need solutions now. It's time to say, what do we do to turn the corner? This would have taken us hours and hours and hours to get up in the top of this tree before. Here you are in minutes. See, we have a pretty nice top-down view, and again, these are three-dimensional points in a point cloud. So it's like it's building a scaffolding, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Coming around it, building that up. So we'll, we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. Okay. Mega broccoli! Look at that sucker. Yeah, look at that. The point density. Oh man. On that tree. Is yeah. Pretty high. You're kind of going. Is that really my eye that's seeing that? Yeah. It's just insane how much data is there, huh? You see yeah. the individual foliar units. Yeah. And the foliar units are like the groupings of leaves out towards yeah. the ends of branch. When we've done this kind of work in the past, one tree, you could take a week to actually just do a single individual. When we look at these climatic changes and we look at the drought that California is in right now, it doesn't help us a lot to be able to look at a single tree. We need to understand what the entire forest is going to do. In a five minute flight, this exceeds any expectation I ever had. Drones are flying robots, so they do the same thing over and over yeah. and over again. We can fly those same orbits every single day, yeah. 365 days of yeah. the year in the exact same positions. That allows us to really pull back, if you will, so that we can actually look at the entire forest to really understand how the forest is responding, not a single tree. Then you get this time series of change, and you can actually watch a crown change, a forest change, a landscape change. I mean, that's such powerful. You can't get that any other way. So now we're able to monitor the health of the sequoia forest with something the same size as a sequoia cone. With this new technology, we're going to be able to scale that information in a much more significant way than we've ever been able to do. Go to the Amazon go to you know, the northeastern part of the United States, look at all kinds of different forest types. How can we join together and bring our various expertise? Can we do a project that we can present to the public that'll get their attention to get them to go around the corner with us?